An overweight teen finds herself in a great conundrum when a compassionate man abducts the three women who've been tormenting her since she was a child. She knows the right thing to do is alert the authorities, but doing so would mean the capture of the only person who's ever treated her like a human being. Sarah, an overweight teen, spends her summer mornings helping out in her family's butcher shop. While there are no customers, she spends time doing schoolwork by the cash register and listening to music on her headphones. Sarah looks out the window and sees the handsome Pedro and his girlfriend Claudia kissing by his motorcycle. Seconds later, Maka catches her gaze and mocks her with rude gestures. Outside, the friends, including Rossi, discuss their plans to head to the local pool later that day. Claudia says she'll meet them there later because she has to pick up her mother's order from the butcher shop. Rossi, who has a malicious idea, joins her at the store. In the butcher shop, Sarah's father, Tomas, warmly welcomes Claudia and says her order's almost ready. Claudia offers a sheepish hello to the shy teen while Rossi tries to hide her snickering. When asked about her plans to attend the Madrigal festivities that evening, Claudia says she and her friends are planning to go, which prompts Tomas to tease Sarah about not joining her friends. Sarah annoyedly says she has to finish her schoolwork, and her mother, Asun, concurs. When Claudia receives her order, Rossi sneakily snaps a picture of the family before they leave. Sarah then sees the friends laughing at something on Rossi's phone. Later, in the walk-in freezer, Sarah checks her phone and sees that Rossi uploaded her family Family's picture on social media, with a caption making fun of their weight. Maka also added more insults in the comments. In her panic, Sarah accidentally likes the post and, in her frustration, punches the hanging meat in front of her. On the freezer floor, she spots her younger brother snoozing. She kicks him awake and says he'll get into trouble if their mother sees him there. While riding Pedro's motorcycle, Claudia fidgets with the friendship bracelet she shares with Sarah. At the pool, the lifeguard playfully smacks the waitress behind, to her amusement. She then approaches a man sitting alone by the pool and serves his drink. After she leaves, the man stares at the lifeguard, who doesn't take too kindly to being gawked at. At Sarah's house, the TV reports an escape bull that was supposed to be a part of the festivities, which the authorities haven't found. During lunch, Asun suggests she join her father hunting tomorrow, so she doesn't spend the entire day cooped up in the house again. Sarah isn't interested in hunting and watches the popular girl stories of their fun day at the pool on social media. That afternoon, Sarah heads to the pool surprised to find it empty. She changes into her bikini and wraps a towel around her body. As she is about to plunge into the pool, she's startled by the stranger suddenly emerging from the water. The man stares at her silently as she self-consciously tries to cover up her body with her hands. At the bridge, the three friends spot Sarah, and Maka tells Claudia they should say hi to her. Rossi is on board with Maka's sinister plans, but Claudia is apprehensive. As the stranger watches, Maka hurls insults and rude remarks about Sarah's appearance. She teases that the stranger is Sarah's boyfriend and sarcastically proclaims her joy that the woman has finally found a man who's attracted to her. As the man wordlessly leaves the pool and walks back toward the bridge, Sarah tries to drown out the insults by swimming into the water. The tormentors move closer to the pool, where Maka further mistreats the helpless Sarah by pushing her down into the water with a skimmer net. Sarah pleads to Claudia to help her, but the meek woman doesn't stand up to her friends. When Sarah finally breaks free of the net, she dives back into the water with her eyes closed not noticing the lifeguard's body tied down to a chair at the bottom of the pool. When Sarah comes up for air, she sees Maka and Rossi take her bag, leaving her with nothing to wear over her bikini on her way home. As she walks home, a car of deviants sees her and torments her by chasing her down with a vehicle and inappropriately grabbing her. The terrified woman can do nothing but cry until the men finally leave her alone. On a dirt road, Sarah passes the stranger's white van and secretly prays that he doesn't bother her. As she passes the vehicle, she doesn't notice an injured and bloody Maka crawling toward the road from the bushes. The stranger grabs Maka's hair and forces her back into the van. The van then drives by a scared Sarah, who wonders why the man suddenly stopped a few feet in front of her. Seconds later, Sarah spots Claudia through the van's back window, begging for help. In the side view mirror, the man looks at Sarah with a worried look. While the blonde woman continues banging on the glass, pleading for Sarah to help her, the man slowly takes a towel and places it on the ground, implying that he's leaving it there for Sarah to use to cover herself up. Frightened and overwhelmed by the situation, Sarah can only give the man a little wave and listen to Claudia's fading wails as he drives away. Sarah grabs the towel and runs back in the other direction. As she passes through town, the policeman, Juan Carlitos, asks her if she's okay, but she ignores him. When she finally gets home, she heads to the bathroom and stands under the shower, visibly shaken by what she witnessed. Suddenly, Asun barges in and demands that she hurry up and help at the shop. To calm herself, Sarah scarfs down a pastry from her secret 
Jared's stash. She then opens her computer to check the picture of her family Rossi posted earlier and sees that it's gone viral, earning hundreds of comments. Sarah slams the laptop shut and forces herself to believe the three women deserved what happened to them. Later, Sarah's father sends her to the store to buy a new light bulb for their meat display case. At the store, she notices the friendship bracelet she shares with Claudia on her wrist and quickly cuts it off with scissors. Unbeknownst to her, the stranger has been silently following her, and he picks up the discarded bracelet from the floor. At the counter, the clerk discourages Sarah from buying her favorite pastries, so Sarah decides to leave them out of her purchase. After Sarah leaves, the stranger takes the pastries and pays for them himself. On her way home, Sarah notices crowds gathering in the square and gossiping about an incident in the pool. Sarah's mother finds her and asks why she isn't answering her phone. The older woman wants to head to the pool to see what's happened and wants Sarah to come with her. At the pool, Sarah sees the police and a forensics team already there. She and Asun see the lifeguard's body on a gurney and learn that the waitress is also missing. Panicked, Sarah throws up by the side of the bridge, and Asun worries she might have caught something when she swam in the water with the body in it. She calls for Juan Carlito's attention, who thinks Sarah's presence in the pool that afternoon might provide them with some clues. He calls over the corporal, who's also his father, who asks Sarah if she saw anything that afternoon. But the woman lies and says she wasn't in the pool today. When Asun insists that she always goes to the pool, Sarah doubles down and exclaims she swims in the river because people at the pool mock her appearance. A local woman, Luciana, remarks that Sarah is overweight, trying to justify the hurtful words about the insecure teen. As they drive away from the pool, Sarah spots Pedro speaking with Juan Carlitos. Behind their vehicle, the stranger's van follows them back into town. At dinner, while the family watches the news, Sarah's brother wonders why the authorities don't simply use the Find My Phone app to locate the missing people, and the realization worries Sarah. Asun then insensitively offers her a salad for dinner. Later, Luciana is tied down to a chair in her home as a news report on TV talks about the waitress boyfriend as the possible perpetrator in the lifeguard's demise, suggesting it was a crime of passion. The stranger approaches the bound woman with a knife and slashes her throat. Meanwhile, Elena, Claudia's mother, drops by wishing to speak with Sarah about her daughter's whereabouts. She's called several times, but Sarah never answered. When Tomas asks where her phone is, she lies and says it's in her bedroom upstairs. Asun isn't pleased by Elena's presence, especially after discovering what her daughter's friends have been saying about Sarah. Elena pleads for Sarah to tell her anything that she knows, but when Asun has heard enough, she drives the woman out of their house. In her bedroom, Sarah hears a thud by her window, where she sees her favorite pastry, and she wonders who could have tossed it through. Minutes later, Sarah sneakily takes her father's phone to find hers via the Find My Phone app. She then heads to the dirt road where she might have lost it. There, she sees a trail of blood and one of Maka's nails on the ground. Suddenly, she hears a noise behind her, and when she turns around, she's face to face with the escaped bull. Frozen in fear, she breathes a sigh of relief when the animal carries on its way. In the trees, Sarah continues to search for her phone, oblivious that the stranger's vehicle is parked nearby. Finally, she hears her phone ringing and finds her bag on the ground just outside an abandoned building. Behind her, the stranger slowly approaches, and Sarah slowly turns around. Frightened, Sarah stands motionless as the man takes her hand and guides her into the building after they hear noises from the road. On the dirt road, Elena is joined by Maka's mother and Rossi's father, who believe their daughters are probably out celebrating the Madrigal festivities. Elena feels their indifference but is adamant about searching for Claudia, especially when her daughter's phone pings just nearby. In the building, the stranger takes Claudia's phone and asks Sarah to be quiet just as they hear the search party approaching. The man lovingly touches Sarah's face, and the two are about to kiss when they hear Elena's voice calling out for her daughter. The stranger skulks away through the back to avoid being seen by the parents, while Sarah hides until she's safely back on the dirt road and on her way home. The search party discovers a body by the abandoned building, and their screams alert Juan Carlitos and the corporal, who are also in the forest searching for the escape bull. Later that night, Sarah pleasures herself while thinking about how the stranger caressed her face and how they stared into each other's eyes. A loud thud on the window snaps her out of the fantasy. She approaches the window and tells the person outside that she'll be down. Outside, Sarah joins Pedro, who asks why she lied to the police about being in the pool that afternoon. Sarah feigns ignorance, but Pedro says Claudia sent a video to their group chat, and she was in it, and now all three women are missing. He asks her again why she lied. So Sarah frustratedly says that she did it because the police and her mother were there, and didn't know if she should tell them that the three friends tried to drown her in the pool. Sarah accuses him of being as mean to her as the women, but Pedro insists that he isn't and says he even deleted the video immediately after receiving it. He apologizes 
Jesus if he ever made her feel how Claudia and the others did. Later, Pedro begs Sarah to tell the authorities what she saw. Elena had come to his house and made a scene, blaming him for the three friends' disappearance. In their town, they always blame the lover whenever a person goes missing, and Pedro can't risk getting into trouble with his parents. Conflicted, Sarah agrees to a compromise and promises to tell the police about the pool if Pedro does get accused. He appreciates her kind gesture and says he's still optimistic the three women are just out partying. Racked by guilt, Sarah starts sobbing, and Pedro comforts her. While hanging the laundry, Asun sees hard to remove stains from the towel Sarah took home from the pool and finds the initials CS written on the tag. Meanwhile, Elena confronts Pedro and demands he tell her what he did to Claudia. Pedro doesn't know what she's talking about, so Elena says the waitress body was found in the woods with Claudia's phone nearby. Elena notices Sarah getting upset and grows suspicious of their spending time together. When Pedro fears for his freedom, he doesn't think twice and throws Sarah under the bus, telling the crowd that Sarah was in the pool with the three friends that afternoon. Soon, Asun joins the commotion, and the two mothers have a scuffle, each woman wanting to protect their daughter. From afar, the stranger watches the altercation go down. In the police station, the authorities promise a distraught Elena that she'll be the first to know if any new information about Claudia comes up. In another room, the corporal and Juan Carlitos interrogate Sarah and finally get her to admit that she was at the pool. She reveals that the three friends took her things, forcing her to walk home in her swimsuit. She chose not to disclose anything else, getting visibly upset the more the policeman prods her to speak. Finally, Asun has seen enough of her daughter's tears for the day and demands they be let go since no charges were filed. In Sarah's bedroom, the stranger is sifting through her jars when Tomas walks in and catches him. The intruder takes him down and wrestles him to the floor. He hears Sarah walking up the stairs, but Asun calls her back down. Asun confronts Sarah about the towel and makes her admit that it's Claudius. When she senses her mother suspecting her, she gets defensive. She screams out all her frustrations about Asun being just like everybody else, constantly judging her based on her appearance and treating her like a child. When Asun is about to strike Sarah, the stranger grabs the older woman's arm and knocks her down to the ground. Suddenly, Sarah's brother walks into the bathroom, unaware of what's happening in the house. When the stranger moves up the stairs to dispose of him, Sarah grabs his arm to stop him, implying that she'd like him to leave her brother alone. After Sarah takes one last pitiful look at her mother, she walks out the door with the stranger, who's taken Tomas's rifle. Outside, the three men who tormented Sarah earlier on the bridge continue their jeering. The man throws Sarah into the van, and he gets in the driver's seat. He then reverses the vehicle quickly toward the men, who scramble in all directions to avoid impact. On the car ride, the stranger momentarily takes his eyes off the road and hits the escape bull, rendering them both unconscious. Later, the stranger carries Sarah to an abandoned slaughterhouse, lays her down on a table, and mends her wound. Hours later, Sarah regains consciousness and wanders around the building until she enters a large room where Claudia and Rossi are bound and strung up on hooks. The two women beg for help while Sarah panics, unsure of what to do. As she unsuccessfully tries to cut the ties on the women's feet, Claudia realizes Sarah never told anyone about the abduction. Through Claudia's pained wails of betrayal, Sarah tries to explain that she was scared because everything she does is wrong. The captive women scream for her to run and get help because they know the man will return soon. Sarah runs and hides behind a wall just as the stranger returns. When Rossi tells him that Sarah ran and got help, he slashes her with his knife. The man searches the facility for the scared Sarah, who tumbles upon the dismembered body of Maka. Horrified, Sarah screams, and the stranger grabs her. She pleads with him, saying she doesn't want to die. The man promises he'd never hurt her and that they need to run away soon. Moments later, he places his knife in her hand and says they'll end Rossi's life together. Instead, Sarah lets out a primal scream and turns around to attack the stranger. The man grabs her arm and knocks her down to the ground. Betrayed, the man walks away to grab the rifle, but Sarah runs toward him with a knife and stabs him several times in the stomach. The man accidentally fires the gun, hitting Claudia's hand, obliterating it. The stranger hits Sarah and knocks her down on the floor again. When she gets back up, she jumps onto him and uses her teeth to tear into the flesh on his neck, severing an artery. Seconds later, the man bleeds profusely and passes away. Confused by her emotions, knowing she's killed the only person showing her affection, she cries over the man's body. Moments later, Sarah takes the rifle, points it at Rossi, and then takes a shot. Then, she points the gun toward Claudia and pulls the trigger. As she walks toward the door, she passes the women, who are still alive, revealing that Sarah merely shot the ropes that kept them tethered to the hooks, setting them free. Instead of helping the women up, she heads out the door and doesn't look back. When she reaches the main road, Pedro drives by on his motorcycle and concernedly tells her to get on so he can take her to the hospital. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help.
help the channel out. Thank you for watching.